today I will show you how to make a similar render like uh, Gleb Kuznetsov. You can also go to his Dribble profile to see more of his great work. First of all, you need to make a screenshot to have the same reference as mine. It will make our work much easier. Then, using curves, we need to make our basic infinity loop shape. Move the curves so that we have a smooth line. Let's add a modifier mirror to mirror all the parts. Uh, for this we also need to put a region in the place where the 3D cursor is. Convert to mesh because now it is an object that consists of two parts. We remove excess vertices and use the F key to connect them in the way I show in the video. Uh, now it's a complete looped object. Convert it back to a curve and duplicate it because we'll need uh, it's in the future. Let's add some thickness to one of the loops using the depth parameter. Convert to mesh and now we need to make a solid object with the remesh modifier. The values are approximate, so the main thing is that there are not too many edges. In any case, they can be smooth with smooth corrective. Remember to check the only smooth checkbox to see the effect. Uh, the more repetitions, the stronger the, the stronger the smoothing. We can apply modifiers since uh, we won't change anything else here in the future. Now we need to create the uh, particles inside, for this we will create a cube. And uh, many cuts, uh, add many cuts to it and stretch it so that we can overlay it on a curve using the curve modifier. Uh, we'll make a scale uh, on the x-axis so that we have two, edge, uh, two ends uh, uh, converging. And now add uh, subdivide as we will need points to add par uh, particles on them. Uh, the main thing, do not forget to make the solve edges for the center cuts to better read the edges and, and in the future uh, there was no chaos of particles. Add the simple deform modifier to twist our shape uh, 360 degrees along the x-axis. Uh, we put it before the curve modifier. Later, if you want to make an animation, you can simply move or rotate this object along the x-axis. Uh, 
On the reference we have characteristic constrictions closer to the center. Let's select the curve, go to edit mode, enable proportional editing and with Alt plus S we can make smooth constrictions to the center and if you spin the mouse wheel you can adjust the smoothness of the constriction. Create icosphere. Uh, this will be our instance of objects for uh, par uh, particles at geometry nodes for the cube that we stretched along the curve. I create an instance on points node to make instance objects all over the object. And now we need to make the scale of these points more randomly uh, using the random value and map range node for better control over this parameter. Let's move the sliders around a bit uh, to find the perfect solution. If your spheres look stretched, apply scale to the cube using Ctrl plus A and then scale. You can do an additional subdivide if you wish. From now on, we'll get into materials and lighting. We will also customize some little things to achieve a perfect replication of the reference. We will create a background play. And add one area light to make a nice background gradient. Then place the camera and set the resolution to 1600 by 1200. Let's adjust the distance of the background light a little bit. Now let's add a blue colored material for our background. We should also change the color of the background area light a bit. Perhaps a disc shape will work better than a square. Let's gradually light our object. Add one source on top, move it a bit and change its intensity. Let's duplicate down and move the background plane a bit so that our lighting doesn't affect it too much. I continue to make small improvements to my taste. Add the material for our object, which should have uh, a nice blue glass. Uh, we add mix shade, mix shader because we need to duplicate principal BSDF in the future. But first, customize it, choose the color, and adjust the parameters like roughness and IOR. completely erase the transmission value.
duplicate principle bsdf let's create a mask to separate the two materials add color ramp for more control and connect layer weight I think most of you are already familiar with this kind of node mapping. Uh, connect a second principal BSDF node. Unfortun unfortunately, the video doesn't show this, but you can do IR values for these two shaders to uh, uh, diversify this glass material a bit. We add sheen to create a soft highlight around the edges. Now let's create a material for our particles as they bring quite a lot to the overall lighting of the glass. Let's make a mix of uh, two emission shaders. I made a little mistake here. I added the material to the uh, cube object where the particles are. Instead, let's add it to the icosphere we created earlier. Add color ramp again. Add colors like in the video. Plugin layer weight to add some variation to our instances. Increase the luminosity to 5, duplicate uh, this and make blue color. Uh, now we randomize these uh, these two shaders uh, a bit using the object info and map range. On the reference we have a void in the center of these particles, so we need to add it inside the material. Uh, we add gradient texture and color ramp, as well as texture gradient and mapping. With the dropper we select the object on which the particles are located. Now I'm just connecting this bunch of nodes directly to better see what I'm doing. Select spherical mode for uh, gradient texture. Then we need to plug, uh, plug in uh, transparent BSDF and use the previous bundle as a factor in the mix shader. Now we have a little bit of blackness inside, which can be removed if we zoom in a little bit uh, on this part of the object as we zoomed it, zoomed it out before. Uh, we are also rid of, uh, rid of it, but we also need to reduce the subdivide value that we added to the geometry nodes earlier.
I'm going to turn on the visibility of the glass object to check everything out. Since we have removed the subdivide inside geometry nodes, we can add it manually. The main thing is to dissolve the inner edges. If you want, you can refine the size of the particles. Let's duplicate the light sources a bit uh, forward and squeeze them to add extra highlighting. Let's change the curves inside color management a bit. And then add a bluish color for the new light sources, as well as increase their intensity. Let's duplicate the changes to the top area light. Let's enlarge the object with the particles on all axes by simply pressing the S hotkey and then compress the X axis so that the particles don't overlap. Uh, press Ctrl plus A and then scale to apply scale. Make small changes that will make the render better. Add a few small uh, light sources to make more expressive highlights. Now it's done, the rest of the tweaks will be up to your taste. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe to the channel. I just started to make videos in English, so I will try to constantly improve the quality of presentation. And yeah, thank you for your understanding. Bye.